Hey, hey, thank you so much for joining us for another amazing interview. Now, as you know, I am spending time with our members and my supporters through Tony Gasson's Academy and bring it to you their business, product, service. So make sure you lock in every Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern. I may move the time up to 4 p.m. Eastern here soon. So just stay tuned Sundays that you can tap in with us. Today, we have an amazing guest, Miss Tanya. Tanya, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, I want to ask you first, where and when was it that you bumped into me online? Uh, many moons ago, I can't even remember, like the way back before 2015, at least. Um, and obviously I came to you because I was going through, you know, an unhealthy relationship. I was looking for relationship advice and just to grow, um, you know, personally as well. So before 2015, for sure on YouTube. Wow, that's a long time because we're in 2024. Wow. So now, have you come through those tough times and kind of on the other side of it and tapping into your purpose now? Yes. So in 2015, um, I entered an unhealthy relationship. And this was someone that I met in college. Um, after I graduated, we met up again and, you know, everything was going well. He was listening. I think I was sharing too much information at the time. And he took everything and basically became this perfect boyfriend for me. Um, shortly after things started, the layer started to um, peel away and um, he was basically, you know, stealing money from me, um, gaslighting me, ghosted a couple of times and um, we went on vacation, came back and he said it was over. Um, so I was broken hearted, didn't know what to do, but I knew to run to Jesus um, so I just started to pray. I was involuntarily fasting because I couldn't eat. And I just remember um, on my knees praying um, and I was telling God I hated my heart. I hated who I was. And that's when I heard him. So God told me that there was nothing wrong with me and that he loved me. And it was at that moment I started to pick up the pieces with God, everything just going to church. So it started to click all the messages. It seems like it was for me. And God um, basically built me up. Um, after that time frame, he told me two things, to write a book. I had no idea how to write a book and also to become a life coach. So I signed up with you and your program. And then I registered for my mentor.life. And um, now I'm living in my purpose, purpose in terms of coaching other women who've gone through the similar things that I have and my book as well. Mm. So your pain birthed your purpose. Yes. That is amazing. Now, now, where are you based? So I'm in Toronto, Canada. Okay, Toronto. Now, are you born and raised in Toronto or is your family from somewhere else? Yeah, so born in Toronto. Uh, my parents are Caribbean, so my mom's Jamaican and my dad's Trinidadian. Wow, okay. Now, why, why is that that so many Caribbean islanders go to Toronto or to Canada in general? I don't know. I mean, I don't think they knew the weather because <laughs> we get terrible winters, but it's something that, you know, they've settled here. A lot of my family now are in Canada down the street. Um, so that's where they decided. And I don't think they they look back only for vacations. They'll go. But other than that, they're they're happy here. Mm, I see. And now is is Toronto. That's where you are planning to to make home for good. Um, wherever God leads me. So now I'm just following his lead and, and what he wants me to do. So if it's in the U.S. or another part of the world, I'm ha happy to go there. I see. Now tell me about your, have you written one book or more? Um, I just wrote one. So it's called uh, Dear God's Daughter, Words of True Love When False Love Fails. Um, you actually promoted my book some time ago as well. And it's basically just um, me pouring out my heart to God with all the toxic and unhealthy emotions, what I was feeling. Um, so at that time, I hated who I was. Um, I had no self-worth, um, no self-esteem, and I was just blaming myself for the relationship. And it's like a love letter, God responding back to me saying, you know, what my thoughts are are not true. 
and that he loves me. So, so kind of dispelling everything that I had in my heart at the time. And how long did it take you to write it? Um, over a year. So it was something that I battled in terms of doubting myself. Could I even write this book? Would anyone want to read it? And also just putting myself out there. I've always been quiet and behind the scenes. So God was definitely pulling on my heart. Um, every time that I doubted, he would send a woman to me and it would be a story about what they were struggling with in terms of unhealthy relationships. So he put women in my path to keep going. Um, so it was a little over a year, um, you know, back and forth tussling and I got it up there. Mm. And you published it. Where is it available to purchase? So it's on um, Amazon. So you can um, get it on Amazon, all the um, online bookstores as well. And now coaching, as well as the book, your coaching, do you like to focus on one-on-one -on -one coaching or group coaching? Um, so right now I've been doing one-on-one -on, -one on my mentor.life. I am now transitioning to group coaching. So I do have an online course that basically walks women who are just coming out of an unhealthy relationship and um, going through the emotions. So God told me back in 2020 to focus on the heart which is the mind, the will, and the emotions. And this is the heart that we tend to give away and having no idea of the purpose behind it and how um, important it is to God and also to the enemy. So I help women um, through that first understanding what the heart is, um, making sure they, they know the functions, um, what's considered an unhealthy heart, um, and the foundation that they're coming into it. And then we go through emotions, emotional um, intelligence and regulation. Then we move to the mind. So the, your thoughts, what are your thoughts about God? Um, what are your thoughts about yourself and establishing that healthy foundation? And then we move into the will. So making sure your will is aligned with God's will to heal your heart. Wow, that sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. And now how many weeks would that be? Um, so right now I'm piloting the program. So it's about four weeks, four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. And you say this will be one-on-one -on -one or group? It will be group coaching. Okay. Amazing. And now do you have, you have a website, correct? Yes. So my website is uh, deargodsdaughter.com. So you'll find all the information there. Um, so right now I'm coupling the group coaching where you get a copy of my book. Um, as well as one-on-one -on -one sessions to work with me inside the program and then a um, academy thereafter. That's amazing. That is amazing. Now, you write currently, are you a mother, single? Like, what does life look like? Um, single, still waiting on my husband, but God's been working with me, um, shedding, you know, what I was looking for in a relationship and a guy in a marriage and now focusing on his way in terms of what he would want my marriage to look like. And I've just been in the meantime, growing my personal relationships with friends and family and just living in my purpose, saying yes to him, being obedient as much as possible. And, um, you know, being this person here to help women go through that same, same healing as well. I see. Are you a mother? No, not a mother. So you're able to focus completely on the ministry. Yes. That's amazing. Now, did you dream of this or was it something that it came about literally from your pain birthing your purpose? Uh, I did not dream this at all. So I went to school for journalism and I actually um, started doing uh, sports journalism. So I went into basketball. And uh, when God said, this is where you're going, it, it was hard to let that go. Um, but looking back, I'm glad I did. I'm doing things that I never thought possible. I have a purpose. I know who I am in him. And um, I know with journalism, I'll get back around the sports industry at some point. But this is my primary focus. And I am happy doing this. Mm, I see. Now, could you do both? Could you do sports journalism and when you come home from, you know, work, do life coaching, do the group coaching? Um, I do want to do both. So I was thinking, um, you know, a podcast in terms of Christian and still focusing on the heart and um, interviewing athletes. I would love to do that. So I think um, that's an, another project that will 
eventually um, show me the way with that. But I, I don't want to let go. I love sports and I love basketball. So I do want to incorporate that at some point. I see. I see. Now that that would be pretty awesome. And I, cause I, I believe that, you know, being a life coach is one of those things where it doesn't take eight hours a day. And so that's the beauty of it is you can coach, you know, a few hours a day, but you also can use your gifts in other ways as well. And so that, that would be pretty amazing. And I also think that you being a sports journalist could bolster your coaching career just because it just makes you more interesting. Like it's, it's, it's very unique. Like we rarely see life coaches who are journalists. So that's something to really think about. And Mm -hmm. post it on that too because I, I know some people who work in basketball and play basketball in Toronto with the Raptors and you just never know it could be a Toronto Raptors journalist one day and um or get back to it so that's pretty awesome yes. now when you think about your ideal client what does that mm -hmm. client look like like what are they going through what um it is a Yes, it's um, a Christian woman, uh, primarily just coming out of a relationship, um, brokenhearted. I want to get them when there's some space between them and the other person so we can just focus on the healing. Um, so I 25 to maybe 45. Um, and, you know, they don't know their worth. They don't know their value. They believe in God, but perhaps they you know, have a different understanding of who God is, perhaps a tainted version of who God is. So um, it's someone that is just looking for help and don't know how to, where to turn. Um, their faith may be very low and I walk them through that whole process. Mm, I see, that's amazing. Now, your relationship that you came out of, how long was it? Um, It's probably close to 10 years now. Wow. And so you, you feel healed. Yes. And now when you were in the relationship, how long did the relationship last? Um, it was about a year or a little over a year. So with that, half the time was in Toronto um, and then half the time was long distance. And it was just the worst thing ever. Um, but I got into it because I didn't know my worth. I thought I did. I thought I knew who I was and that person just picked everything apart from me. Um, I had a lot of people pleasing issues and um, trusted somebody and he broke my heart all the way in China where he was. So um, I, you know, binge watched a lot of your videos just to, um, again, understand myself and also understand men as well. Mm. I can tell from your spirit, you know, that you have a servant's heart that very supportive and empathetic and, and loving and caring. And that makes up for the perfect life coach because you got to have those things to be able to help other people. Now, is this something that you feel you develop in childhood or did you develop it in caring for yourself and learning to, to love yourself? I think it was childhood, just, you know, wanting to be close to family and, and friends and just a loving nature. And um, I just remember, again, asking God to take away this quality that a lot of people were abusing. And the beauty of it is that he didn't want to take that away. He just wanted me to know how to um, store it, my gift, store my heart, protect my heart against, you know, certain people, uh, but use it in a certain way that glorifies him. So I'm glad that he kept my heart. Um, and so I can share it now and it help other women and men too. That's powerful. That is powerful. And I don't think a lot of people think about that aspect of this very thing that this guy was taking advantage of is the very thing that makes you a successful life coach and gives you what you need to help those who are seeking help and not seeking to take advantage of you. And mm -hmm. that's powerful. And I've never, I don't think I've ever heard it put that way. So I'm definitely going to be using that in my coaching sessions. <laughs> uh, because a lot of times we, like you say, we want to change and we almost 
start to hate that about us. And it's like, why am I like that? Why am I like that? And mm -hmm. that's, that's a ministry for me right now because I'm a giver. And I'm like, oh, why do I have to be a giver? Like, help me say no, help me say no. But from talking to you, I'm now realizing maybe God is saying, no, this is going to come in handy when I bless you with the funds to really give and impact the kingdom. So mm -hmm. you need to keep this about you. And it's just on the job training, giving to friends and family and what have you. So that's amazing revelation that you have had. Now, what would you say to a woman who is in a relationship right now and is toxic and we all say, just leave, just leave. And that's not always fair, but do you think it's safer to try to leave or safer to stay until it just the person leaves you. I would say it's safer to do it with God. God is going to give you the bl the blueprint. He's going to tell you when to move, where to move. He's going to give you the strategy. Um, I feel like in 2024, we can't date without the Holy Spirit. And it's something that God, you know, wants to protect us. He doesn't want us dead. Looking at all the cases of young women that are getting, you know, murdered by by their boyfriends, ex-boyfriends. Um, it's the relationship with God that's going to protect us. And I would say God's going to let you know when to move. It is to try to, to get close to him in that relationship that you're you're in. Um, but he he will tell you when it's time to move and where 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 to go to make sure that you're safe. Mm. Now, that right there, I, I know it's a lot of people, they're going to ask, well, how do I hear God? and How do I get to know God? For you, what do you think that it was that helped you get closer to God? Like, what, what was that season like of trying to get closer to God? Were you just praying more? Were you reading your Bible more? What did that look like for you? Um, it was just surrendering. I was at my end. Um, I didn't know where to go. And it was just being completely honest and vulnerable with him. And looking back, I had a lot of pride. I thought I knew what I knew. I thought this guy was it. And it's just surrendering that pride, surrendering that I don't know anything about anything and, and going to God. And I heard him audibly. I don't hear him audibly all the time, but he does speak to you definitely in the Bible. So, and that's what I was reading. I was reading scripture, um, getting to know his voice. So when you do hear him, and that's whether through friends and family, a stranger on the street, and you will know him once you know his voice. So how we start is, is with the Bible, reading scripture, and just pulling scripture that, you know, that you need. You need that extra voice saying, you know, it's going to be okay and that he loves you. And, and that's what I needed at that time. That's powerful. That is powerful. And I know that is something that people struggle with, but that's something. Now, are you open to one-on-one -on -one coaching? Like if someone just wanted to talk to you just one-on-one, -on -one, do you have that availability? Yes. So I do. I'm still on my mentor.life. So I do have availability as well. So um, you can definitely find me on my mentor.life. Definitely. If you're watching this, check in the description box for her, my mentor.life link. So that way you can have a one-on-one -on -one session. And especially if you're in that space to where you're trying to get closer to God and you need an accountability partner to maybe help you with a Bible reading plan or with a prayer strategy or plan and just someone that you can talk to about what your spirit is hearing and feeling so that you can navigate those waters. Now, as far as you, Tanya, what do you think that man from God, like, what do you think that looks like? Like, what, what has your heart been saying to God in regards to your husband? Is it a specific prayer you pray? Is it certain attributes or are you kind of just flowing? Um, I've been doing everything under the sun. So I've been fasting, um, making sure that I don't make marriage an idol or make the next person an idol. I definitely did that with my ex. 
um, where I was solely sold out on him. Um, so definitely praying, understanding um, God's view and definition of marriage, and it's to be in unity. Um, I follow many um, women and men of God online as well. Um, Tiffany Montgomery, as an example, just doing um, a marriage fast, which is not really focused on the, the earthly marriage, but the marriage with God. And just to stay close in my relationship with God. So when he says, this is the person that I don't push him away, that I recognize him. Um, the characteristics definitely have to be there. I just remember um, one time I actually got approached not too long ago at church. And this guy, he tapped me on the shoulder, we exchanged numbers, and we were speaking. And I'm, I was just listening. So I remember like, okay, what did Tony Gaskin say here? Let me practice everything. So I was just listening to him talk. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And he was just, I don't know what it was, if it was the light of God, but he was just spilling. And I'm like, this doesn't sound like my husband. But I remember just checking with God, uh, making sure, you know, it's not me, that I'm not rejecting someone too early. Um, the second conversation he knew everything about God. He knew the Bible inside out. He was, you know, running Bible study. Um, but God said, this wasn't it. And um, I told him. So in 72 hours, I got my answer. And I said, you know, you're not my husband. And goodbye. So it's definitely still establishing that relationship, the characteristics of um, who God wants you to be, as well as your partner. And it shouldn't, we're not perfect. I'm not close to Jesus, but the characteristics of, you know, the fruits of the spirit is something that I'm looking for. And I think someone that complements my purpose as well as me would compliment them. Mm, I see. That is amazing. That is, and that, that is key. What you said about being able to recognize, you know, the, the spirit and being able to try the spirit by the spirit and knowing when you can hear God in a man. Because that is something that a lot of people, men and women, when waiting on God for a spouse, can overlook. Now, when it comes to that, I know it's going to be women that come to you and they want to talk about their, their potential husband. Do you feel like, is that something that you lean into? in talking about that and just kind of bouncing ideas or is it something more so that you focus on the individual, the woman in her healing process? Um, I would say more focusing on the woman making sure again, that her foundation is straight with God first. And I think um, in terms of who the potential person is that that's between her and God, but just making sure, you know, there are signs that you can look at definitely in terms of the characteristics, um, but just focusing on her heart and her relationship with God. So she has no doubt that this is the person. And like we were saying to, to try the spirit, um, God is the only one that knows the heart of the individual and um, have him read it and, and let you know if this is the person that you should be with. Mm -hmm. So now tell us again, the, the name of your book. Yeah, so it's um, Dear God's Daughter, Words of True Love When False Love Fails, and it's on Amazon. And if you do join the group coaching, you get that copy free. Um, and it's my one and only my baby, <laughs> my baby book. <laughs> That's amazing. Dear God's Daughter. Now, can they, I wonder, would that come up if they type Dear God's da Daughter, Tanya Raymond? That'll, yes. it'll bring it up. Okay, and it's on Amazon. And from there, your website is? Um, DearGodsDaughter.com as well. DearGodsDaughter.com. And now on the website, can they find somewhere to sign up for the group coaching? Or is that something you want them to write in about? Um, no, you can find it there. So if you scroll down, you'll see um, a picture that talks about group coaching. And then it will lead you directly to the website. Awesome. Well, Tanya, thank you so much. I am praying for a flood of clients to come. And I think that the group that you are starting, that you have, it is amazing because women need that, that sisterhood where you can talk to people who have gone through or are going through and you can encourage one another. So to everybody watching this, 
make sure that you visit Tony's website, get in the group coaching program, and y'all strengthen and encourage one another. And also make sure you get her book. And if you're not the group type and you just need to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, then do that as well. Set your calendars. Sundays, 9 p.m. Eastern. Look forward to talking to you in the future. Tanya, thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. So let me see here. We go.